Hello friends! In math yesterday we started working with doubles and near doubles. We're going to continue working with those today and we're going to use doubles and near doubles for subtraction. Yesterday we used doubles and near doubles for addition and today we're going to flip it up a little bit and see how we use them for subtraction. So I'm going to write an example for each thing that we learned about yesterday. So doubles, we know are two of the same number. So for example, four plus four equals eight. That is a set of doubles. I have two of the exact same number. And they add up to equal eight. Another example would be seven plus seven equals 14, or 10 plus 10 equals 20. Anytime we have two of the exact same numbers that we're adding together, it's a double. So I'm going to keep going with our first example, 4 plus 4 equals 8. So now what happens if we do doubles plus 1? So if I write down doubles plus 1, what that means is we're keeping our first number the same, right? Doubles plus 1, but I'm not just adding 1, right? No, I want to add my 1 to our other double. So I want to add 1 to 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So I know that my doubles plus 1 looks like 4 plus 5. And I know if I'm adding 1 to get from 4 to 5, then I'm going to add 1 to my answer as well. So I know my answer for 4 plus 5 is 9. And I can check it because 8 plus 1 is 9. So that's how we do our doubles plus 1. We just change our second number to 1 more than our double. And then our answer is 1 more. So for doubles minus 1, it's very similar. So doubles minus 1. We're looking at our original problem again. So it's 4 plus 4. But this time, I want to do minus 1 from our doubles. So what that means is I'm doing minus 1 from our second number. So 4 minus 1 is what? 3. So I know my doubles minus 1 looks like this. 4 plus 3 equals what? 7. And I know it's very similar to this one. If we're looking at our original and we're doing doubles minus 1, I minus 1 here in my second add-in, and I minus 1 here from my answer, my sum. So we get 4 plus 3 equals 7. And we worked on this a little bit with our unifix cubes yesterday as well. If I look at unifix cubes for my first doubles, I have 4 plus 4. They are even, right? So I can break them apart into two different groups. Now I'll do my doubles plus one. So I'm going to add a different color unifix cube just so we can see it. So I'm going to add doubles plus one. Now I have my number sentence right here and I have it in unifix cubes. I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So it's just one more than my doubles, and my answer is 9. But if I'm doing doubles minus 1, I have to go back to my original, so I have 8, but now I need to take away 1. So I'm going to pull a cube off just like that, and now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3. So I have my doubles just minus 1. But what happens if we have a number that's not even? What happens if my number is 9? If my number is 9 and I have it in unifix cubes, can I break it down into two even parts? Into two equal parts? Let's see it. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to try to break them into two even parts and look at that. I can't break them into even parts, right? Because 9 is an odd number, which means not everybody has a partner. So I have 4 in this group and 5 in this group. If I was just looking at my last example, this would be a near double of 4 plus 4 equals 8. 
right? Because we know this would be a doubles plus one because I have four plus five equals nine. Now I want to try some with subtraction. So if we're working with our last doubles example, four plus four equals eight, how can I turn that into a subtraction problem? I would start with my answer, right? So I would start with my biggest number, which is eight. Now what can I take away? So let's see, if I have, and I'm gonna use my unifix cubes for this, I know four plus four equals, equals eight. So now, if I take my 8, and I do 8 minus 4, 8 minus 4 equals 4. See, so we can use our doubles number sentences to help us figure out how we can subtract. If I know 4 plus 4 equals 8, then I know that 8 minus 4 equals 4. Let's try another one. Here's my next one. If I know that 3 plus 3 equals 6, then I know that 6 minus 3, so if I take away 3 from here, it equals 3. Right, so all we're doing is switching our addition sign to subtraction sign, and we're just flipping around our numbers. So once we know our doubles equations, it can help us do our subtraction ones as well. But now, what happens if we're subtracting from an odd number? So what if my problem looks like this? 17 minus 9. Can I break apart 17 into two equal groups? No, right, because it's an odd number. We know it's odd because we're looking at our ones place, and seven is odd. So we know our number 17 is an odd number. So how can we solve this problem? One way is to think about our doubles. I know that 17 is one more than 16. Okay, so I'm going to write 16 over here. And I know a doubles fact that equals 16. And that is 8 plus 8. So now this can help me solve my problem. I know that 9 is one more than 8. So maybe this I can work with my doubles plus 1. So if I change my 8 plus 8 to a doubles plus 1, it will look like this. 8 plus 9, because we're adding 1 if it's doubles plus 1, and we're adding 1 here right? So my answer becomes 17. So I know using my doubles of 8 plus 8 equals 16, that 8 plus 9 equals 17. So now, just like we did with our 3 plus 3 equals 6, and our other example, I know that I can turn my numbers to help me figure this out. So if I'm looking at, and I'm going to go ahead and erase my doubles, if I'm just looking at this problem, what number am I missing right here? I have 17, I have 9, so the number I'm missing is 8. If I know 8 plus 9 is 17, then I know 17 minus 9 is 8. But what if I did this instead? What if I had 17 minus 8? Could I still use my problem to help me solve it? Yeah, right? I would just look at my missing number. I know 8 plus 9 is 17, so 17 minus 8 is 9. So we're going to look at a few problems on this worksheet, and then you're going to do the rest on your own. So let me grab a pencil. Okay, so if we look, let's take a look at our first one. We have 8 plus blank equals 15. So I might think, hmm, what's a double stack? that's close to this. And they give us a number, so I'm going to use this number. So I'm going to do eight plus eight equals 16, just like we did on our last example. Eight plus eight equals 16. And they give us our answer of 15. So would I be doing doubles plus one or doubles minus one? Doubles minus one, right? Because 15 is less than 16. So I know if I'm doing doubles minus one, 
my problem will look like this. What is one, what is one minus eight? Or what's one less than eight? Seven. So I know my answer for the first one is eight plus seven equals 15. And I used my doubles to solve that. Let's try another one. Let's try nine minus five. Okay, so if I have nine minus five, I want to use a doubles equation to help me. So I might do five plus five equals 10. Okay, so here's my doubles. Now I need to either do a doubles minus one or a doubles plus one. Nine is less than 10. So I might do doubles minus one. So I would say five plus, so if nine is one less than 10, what's one less than five? Four. So I know a near double number sentence that I can use for nine minus five is five plus four equals nine. Now I can see what's missing from my number sentence over here. Nine minus five equals what? What's missing? R4, right? So I know that nine minus five equals four. Okay, so you can use your different doubles and near doubles to help you solve these problems. Let's do one more together. Let's try seven equals 13 minus, okay, so we're gonna look at this one. Seven equals 13 minus. So I'm going to use the smaller number to help me with my doubles. And that's why I want you guys to do is look at our smaller number to figure out what our double or our near double is. So I might say my double is seven plus seven equals 14. Okay, now I need to think, how can I solve this problem? I know that 13 is one less than 14. So I'm going to do my doubles minus one again. So if I am doing doubles minus one, I know that seven, my first seven stays the same. And then my second seven, I do my doubles minus one. So it would become six. Now I know for this top problem that I am missing the number what? Number six, 13 minus six is seven, just like seven plus six is 13.